The Big Bang is thought to have occurred at the very beginning of creation. It is thought to be the beginning of the universe. The Big Bang Theory talks about the universe and about how it started with a small singularity and then about it expanding over the next 13.8 billion years to the universe that we know today. Big Bang enthusiasts suggest that many billions of years ago a massive blast allowed all the universe's known matter and energy, even space and time themselves, to appear from some unknown type of energy. The theory continues to say that in that instant, a trillionth trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the universe expanded with unfathomable speed from its pebble-sized origin. Findings in astronomy and physics have shown that beyond a doubt that the universe had a beginning, and before that beginning there was nothing in existence, nothing anywhere. And then there was something, our universe and whatever is in it. The Big Bang Theory was created to be able to explain the very beginning of our universe. Many believe that the Big Bang occurred, but like anything in science, there needs to be evidence to back it up. One sample of evidence is through the redshift of faraway galaxies. You may ask, but what is redshift? Well, redshift occurs when a distant galaxy has had their light stretched ever so slightly and because of this it appears redder than it normally would. This is a diagram of what this would look like when compared to an unshifted spectrum galaxy. But anyway, back to the point. Through redshifts in faraway galaxies we know that the universe is expanding. But like anything that is expanding or that has expanded, there must have been an origin point. In case of our universe, it would have to have been the Big Bang that would set everything in motion. Another bit of evidence that backs up the Big Bang Theory is known as the microwave background. It states that near the beginning of our universe that it was very humid and or hot, but thanks to the universe expanding, it cooled exponentially. But as it cooled, the heat left behind a glow that fills our universe. The proof that this brings to the Big Bang Theory is that within the theory it predicts this glow and says that it should be visible through microwaves and that it is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This microwave background has been accurately measured by orbiting detectors and is part of the proof to the Big Bang Theory. Another bit of evidence that helps prove the Big Bang Theory is known as the mixture of elements. During the time when the universe was expanding and cooling after the heat that was left behind, during the time when the universe was expanding and cooling after the heat that was there left behind the glow, but because of this some of today's elements were created. This helps prove the Big Bang Theory because it predicts the amount of each element that should have been made in the early universe. And what we have seen is that it was right. Stars are born in nebula. Huge clouds of dust and gas collapse under gravitational forces. These are called protostars. The protostars then collapse again to form the star sequence. The lifetime of a star depends on the size of the star. The, the larger a star is, the more energy and fuel it uses, which means it will run out faster and may only last for a few hundred thousand years. In comparison to that, the smaller stars use less energy and fuel, so it can last for longer and longer. Some stars can stay alive for up to 7 billion years. Hydrogen is what keeps the star alive. When the hydrogen begins to run out, they begin their final stages of their life. The sun was born the same way stars were. It was born in a large cloud of dust around 5 million years ago. In the centre of the sun, a large mass was forming, creating a huge amount of pressure and heat. The more the sun grew, the hotter and hotter it would get. In time, the sun reached a furious heat of 1 million degrees. Once it reached this heat, the course of the sun started to ignite. This caused it to begin a nuclear fusion. Once the sun had gone through all these steps, it began to produce its own heat, light and energy. Without these intense energy and light, life on Earth would be non-existent. Stars expand as they grow up. 
and it, it expands, cools and becomes less bright. This is a red giant or a red supergiant. It will eventually collapse and explode. Its fate is determined by the original mass of the star. It will become either a black dwarf, neutron star or a black hole. Main sequence stars. This is where most stars are born and live. The sun has been on the main sequence for about 5 billion years. Red giant star. Once the star has burned up all of its hydrogen fuel, it becomes a red giant. White dwarf star. This is the stage after the big red star. After the star has used up all of its nuclear fuel, it's at the end of its burning stage. Most of the outer layers is expelled and the hot core is the only part of the star that still remains. Neutron stars. This isn't actually a star, it is a stellar remnant. When a huge star reaches a point in its life, it explodes into supernova explosion. All that is left behind is its extremely dense core. Black hole. Due to the supernova explosion, it causes the stars to collapse in one another. This is what causes a black hole. A black hole is so dense that even light cannot escape from it. Brown dwarfs. Brown dwarf stars are actually fast stars rather than real stars. It is harder for this star to ignite, so it is seen as being a lot smaller. Variable stars. The most common star we see at night stays at the same brightness, but variable stars contract and expand. This causes the star to change brightness throughout the night. The galaxy in which we live is known as the Milky Way. The size of our galaxy is about 10,000 light years thick and about 100,000 light years across. Our universe contains 200 billion stars, including our sun. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is what is known as a barred spiral galaxy. Our position in the galaxy is that we are not in the centre, but we are also not near the edge. Our galaxy structure is made up of a central bulge, known as the galactic bulge, which contains a monstrous black hole, billions of times bigger than the sun. The galactic bulge is surrounded by four large spiral arms. Our solar system is on the Orion arm between the arms Pisces and Sagittarius. Our galaxy is made up of dust and gas and at the centre it is also made up of stars. Along with dust and gas, new stars are constantly being formed within these arms. Another piece of the Milky Way is a spherical halo that is made up of hot gas, old stars and globular clusters. This halo stretches for hundreds and thousands of light years. The Triangulum Galaxy Three million light years away from Earth in the constellation Triangulum is the Triangulum Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy is a spiral galaxy, or is sometimes referred to as the Pinwheel Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy is the third largest member of the galaxies that exist close to the Milky Way. The Triangulum Galaxy is one of the most distant permanent objects that can be viewed with the naked eye. The Triangulum Galaxy is believed to be a gravitationally bound companion of the Andromeda Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy is thought to be home to 40 billion stars. Not much is known of the actual mass of this galaxy, but the estimated mass of the galaxy is between 10 billion and 40 billion times the Sun's mass. Like the Milky Way, it has a small satellite galaxy of its own. It is called the Pisces Dwarf Galaxy. The most, if not only, of the distinctive features of the Triangulum Galaxy is its ionised hydrogen clouds that exist in it. Earth, the planet on which we live, is the third largest planet from the Sun in the Milky Way Galaxy. Earth's name, unlike the other planets in the solar system, does not relate to any deities, but originates from the Anglo-Saxon word Erda which means soil or ground. The Earth is the largest of the terrestrial planets, mainly because it is the only known planet that supports life. The Earth is a large planet with an equatorial diameter of 12,756 kilometres and a polar diameter of 12,714 kilometres. 
while the mass of the Earth is five quadrillion nine hundred and seventy two trillion one hundred and ninety billion kilograms. The Moon is the only natural satellite that the Earth has. The Moon is also in synchronous rotation with Earth. Like the Earth, the Moon is a rather large substance with a circumference at its equator at 10,917 kilometers and has a diameter of 3,475 kilometers. The mass of the moon is 73 quadrillion 476 trillion 730 billion 924 million 573,500 million. Basically, it is 0 0.0123 times the mass of the Earth. Kilograms. The Moon is 384,400 kilometers from the Earth. On Earth started at least 3.8 billion years ago. By this time the planet had cooled and formed a rocky crust. Some scientists think that life had begun by asteroids and comets from outer space. I believe life began from in a rock pool on the ocean. Everywhere on our planet bacteria and other simple life forms have made themselves a home. Bacteria has been discovered everywhere on Earth. It has been found underground inside solid rock and they live on the gases and minerals inside the rock. Been found in the most freezing parts of the world, near the hot springs and in the darkest bits of the ocean. Some can survive in highly radioactive places. As long as water is available, bacteria would live there.